I was fascinated by the president's Passover message. Um, I thought it was interesting. It's basically uh, this year the ancient instruction is reflected in the daily headlines as we see modern stories of social transformation and liberation unfolding in the Middle East and North Africa. Most of us know the basic story. The Hebrews had been in bondage for 400 years and then came Moses. I don't think this is an actual videotape of the actual event, but it's close <laughs> enough. Moses went to the Pharaoh, a brutal dictator, enslaving the Hebrews. He tried to convince them to set the Lord's people free. The Pharaoh's heart was hardened. God sent ten plagues. Final plague, angel of death to take on the firstborn of every Egyptian family in Egypt. So the Hebrews paint the doorframe with lamb's blood so the angel, angel will pass over their homes, spare their children. As the angel visits Egypt, the Hebrews have dinner with a ceremony. And it is a symbolic dinner, food to remind them of the trials uh, in Egypt, and what the Lord was doing for them then and what the Lord is doing for them now. It's the Seder that is still commemorated today. Finally, Pharaoh told Moses, okay, get your people and get out. Obama issues this message regarding Passover and said this year, the ancient instruction that happens at tables like this last night and today is reflected in the daily headlines we see in uh, modern stories of social transformation and liberation unfolding in the Middle East and North Africa. Against the backdrop of change, we continue to pray for peace between Israel and our neighbors while reaffirming our enduring commitment to Israel's security. Really? Really? At this sacred event, bringing up social transformation and liberation of the people who have vowed to go to war with Israel as soon as they're free, who have sworn to destroy them, to annihilate them, to kill every last one, to shoot them from their wheelchairs, People who have expressed their intense hatred for Israel and the Jews and America during that transformation. This, to me, this statement is at the very least amazingly insensitive. By the way, his next sentence was, As Jewish families gather together for this joyous celebration, let us be thankful for the gifts that have been bestowed upon us and let us work to alleviate the suffering, poverty, injustice, and hunger of those who are not yet free. Is it a stretch to think that the president is referring to the Palestinians there? He just referred to Egypt, whose leaders are promising war. I don't think it's much of a stretch. The world wonders why it is that most Americans sympathize with the Israelis in their continual battle with the Palestinians in the Arab world. I don't think it's that hard to understand. Israel is a democracy. It's the closest thing to what we understand as freedom in the entire Middle East. We relate to that. But maybe more importantly, we share common values. The Pilgrims, this is one of the best books ever. America's Prophet, it's about Moses. The Pilgrims settled here and believed that they were finishing the Moses story, coming to the Promised Land. They had to cross the sea, arrive in an untested wilderness, and built, build their homes and their lives in a Promised Land. On the Atlantic, their leader, William Bradford, proclaimed their journey to be as vital as Moses and the Israelites when they went out of Egypt. And when they got to Cape Cod, they thanked God for letting them pass through their fiery Red Sea. Read this book. The story is the same for America and Israel and all over the world. But the pilgrims didn't want to destroy and kill the Jews. With Israel, Americans have a shared culture, shared history and values. We have been close allies since their inception. Actually, Israel was born because Harry Truman stood alone and suggested that England should keep their word, something they promised the Jews that they would have a homeland since, I believe it was World War I, wasn't it? There have been occasional bumps in the road with our relationship with Israel, but we have stood by them. When no one else would, but now I fear that seems to be changing. For an American president to bring up Muslim nations whose liberties, who their revolutions have brought, brought out leaders announcing themselves as sworn enemies of Israel and Jews at a Seder, to me, goes beyond insensitive. Beyond insensitive. 
it's a slap in the face, especially when you know the history of this administration and what we have already done to Israel. More in a minute. Israel and, um, and President Obama and this administration, and uh, I have to tell you, I, 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 uh, I can feel to fish. It's like fish in a jar, like mushy fish you scoop out of a jar, and the carrot on top doesn't help. I don't know who's thinking, oh, we put a carrot on top, then people will love it. And the bread, matzah. You know why the bread is like this? Because they didn't have time to wait for the bread to rise. That says something. You don't have time for bread to rise. It means you're on the run, and you're used to being on the run. And remember how fast things can change. I'm reading a book right now um, at my office about um, the Jews in, uh, I think it's Amsterdam. You'd better be prepared to run. The president's beloved revolution uh, that he wanted everybody to remember on the Seder dinner um, ended with Egyptians surrounding the Israeli embassy. Here's the story. Egyptians march on the Israeli embassy. Arab newspaper reports say protesters burned Israeli flags, hounded, handed out flyers calling for a third intifada to be held on Nakba Day. Nakba Day. More than a thousand marched on the Israeli embassy. The protesters demanded cutting all diplomatic and financial ties with Israel and openly crossing between Egypt and Gaza. They're calling for the infatada, uh, the in infatada on Nakba Day. Nakba Day. What is that? Nakba Day is the day of catastrophe. They celebrate that every year on May 15th. The day of catastrophe. That's what the Palestinians call it. People in the Middle East. But May 15th is also the celebration of the creation of Israel. Day of Catastrophe, Independence Day. So thanks again, Mr. President. Lovely reference for Passover. Will you be celebrating, you know, the Serbs, uh, Kursna Slava at your next dinner with the Croatians? I mean, maybe you can congratulate the Hutus over coffee with the Tutsis. I'm just saying. The slaps are getting harder and harder for the average American to ignore, but are they even seeing them? Some people that know that they have to move fast at times. Do you have the courage to stand up and make sure that this doesn't happen again in your lifetime? For anybody. Do you have the courage? <laughs> and do you have bread that won't break in half like that? Israel must have our support. And I'm not talking about military support. I'm saying they must have our support as a people. They have a right to survive and to be free from extermination and the people who want to vaporize them. They have a right to defend themselves. Will Americans stand up and say that? A right to hold on to the land taken as a buffer zone between them and people who want to kill them all the time. That's the only support they need. They need courageous friends that will stand up and say they have a right to survive. That's the support they deserve the support that they have earned and the support that is required. We are doing a Muslim outreach uh, this week in Washington, D.C. Hillary Clinton is there and we're meeting with all the leaders of the Muslim world and it's fantastic. And while we're doing that, I don't think we're paying attention to Israel or Christians all around the world. Have you heard this reported yet? Palm Sunday, four people from an anti-Christian group attacked two pieces of religious artwork in France. Much more serious incident, democracy in action, ignited Nigerian slaughter. Following the election of a Christian candidate for president, many were killed when protest over his election erupted. The country's 150 million people are almost equally divided between Christians and Muslims. I read this morning that there are bodies in the streets. This isn't the first time Christians were subject to violence in Nigeria. Last July, eight people were killed in Christian villages when they were attacked. Last March, more than 500 people died when five Christian villages came under attack. A few months ago, a former Red Cross worker, Red Cross worker, lost his leg in a landmine explosion. They sentenced him to death. He had to be hanged because he converted to Christianity in the country we just freed and are still over there keeping them free. 
In Egypt, amidst the protest, 11 Coptic Christians were attacked and killed in their homes. Christians are being targeted today in Iraq. It's been horrific enough to gain the attention of just about everybody. I mean, the Pope has done it. The Pope has denounced the violence against Christians, but has it piqued the interest of the President of the United States or the news media? Have you heard that? Not so far. He has warned, however, of rounding up Muslims on the streets of America and targeting Hispanic parents in Arizona that are just out trying to have some ice cream with their kids. As always, this president has really zeroed in on the real source of our problems in America. The final chapter begins on Friday. Every new beginning comes from one beginning's end. Our one beginning's end begins on Friday. Join us. You don't want to miss it. From New York, good night, America.